Okay, welcome to uh, gotomath.com and we're going to be doing some calculus. Let's just click on the uh, calculus button here. And we're going to be doing some numerical uh, <coughs> evaluating limits numerically. Um, okay, so let's take a look at these problems here. And this looks like a good one. We'll get started with this says the limit as x approaches 10 of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Alright, so let's go to the whiteboard. So let me write this out here. We had the limit as x approaches 10 of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Now 10 is not really where it's interesting. It's interesting when x is 1. However, we'll be getting to those problems uh, here shortly. Um, but anyway, let's pretend here that f of x is equal to x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. And this f of x is what's actually getting written right here. Okay. So we could say the limit as x approaches 10 of f of x. All right, That's what we could say. And then, of course, you would just rewrite it like this right here. Now, what, like I said, what's more interesting here is, is what happens when we plug 1 into this? What do we get? Well, you get 1 squared in the numerator and then 1 in the denominator and we get 0 over 0 and this means that uh, well it means there's you could say there's a hole in the graph a missing point but it also means that x is not x is or 1 is not in the domain okay we can't use 1 when we use 1 this thing breaks down so we don't know where that actual hole is. There's a hole in the graph, a missing point. But we don't know where it is because when we go to plug 1 in, we don't get anything out over here. Well, what the limit is going to do is it's going to tell you where that hole is actually at on the graph, where the hole is on the graph. If we had to actually graph this thing out, and I think we'll do that, we will do that right here. Okay, we're going to graph this thing out. And this graph looks something like this. And we're going to say this is 1 right here. On the x-axis, there's a missing point. I'll do that just by an open dot right, right there. And then it goes on like this right here. All right. Okay, so this is the, uh, this is the graph and there's a missing point which means when we plug one in we don't get a y value out there is no y value associated with one and one is not in the domain therefore we can say one's not in the domain of f but the limit over here will tell us where that hole is at and this section is called evaluating the limit numerically and numerically means we're just going to plug some numbers in and try to find out about where this hole is located. And what we could actually do here is, is we could take a number that's kind of to the left of 1 and close to 1, um, like for example, point, uh, 0.9. Let's say point 0.9. If we took point 0.9 and we plugged it into the function up here, okay, that's going to give us a y value that's you know fairly close to where this hole is located but if we got even any if we got closer like 0.99 right or we put in 0.999 so as you can see we're getting closer and closer to one from the left hand side which means that we're going to be getting closer and closer to whatever this uh, we'll call it L here to whatever this wherever this Y value is represents this hole right here okay and then of course you know we could even get any even get closer by taking 0.9999 and plugging it in up here and of course you know you would see it like this 0.9 and then we get some y value and then f is 
0.99, right? And we look at these values, F is 0 0.999, okay? So we could see, now this is called coming in from the left-hand side, but we also want to come in from the right-hand side because this graph actually might be fractured and may start up here and go that way. So we could come in from the right-hand side, plug in numbers in, like for example, f of 1.1, uh, f of 1.01, right? f of 1.001. So as you can see, we're getting closer and closer coming in from the right-hand side. Now these numbers, okay, like this guy right here, and these, these guys should be uh, approaching the same value. This number should be about the same as this number here and so forth, right? If this number is totally different than this number, uh, that means that uh, this limit doesn't exist, okay? But that's what the limit, that's all that the limit is, is you're just plugging numbers in and you're getting really close, close, close. Now, like I said, this is the section on evaluating limits numerically. We're going to do this analytically in the next section where we're actually not plugging numbers in. Now, what I want to do now is, is actually go over to the, uh, back to the page. Let's bring that up. I want to click on the help button here and kind of show you what we uh, what we did. Now this particular one right here, okay, when we plug 10 in, all right, you can plug 10 in and plug 10 in and we can get a number out, all right. However, we're treating it like, we're going to treat this a different way where we're just like I did in the example on the board where we're coming in from the left and coming in from the right and then looking at what those numbers are converging towards, okay? So it says we will approach 10 from the left-hand side. So that means, so you take 10 and we're going to subtract off 0.1, right? So that was 9.9, uh, uh, yeah, 9.9 right there. And so as you can see, you get 10.9. And then we subtract off 0 0.01, right? And then, so as you can see, as we're getting closer and closer to 10 coming in from the left-hand side, you can see what this number is kind of gravitating towards or converging towards, we say in math. All right. And then it says we will approach 10 from the right-hand side. And then, uh, as you can see here, what's happening, okay, uh, 11, 11.01, da, 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 da. So, as you can see by taking a look at these numbers right here, what this thing is going towards, this is heading towards 11 coming in from the left, and this is heading towards 11 coming in from the right-hand side. <clears throat> and of course, if we click on the answer right here, we'll see it's 11. All right. But yes, you could plug the 10 in. It's called doing direct substitution, plugging the 10 directly in, and then uh, getting, uh, getting a number out. All right, but this is the numerical where we do it numerically, okay? And for some reason, I can't scroll all the way down to the bottom of the screen. We got a little extra down there, but it's not much. Okay, so that's all there is to limits at this point. That's all there is. All right, see you there. Bye.